Okay, let's go. Um, DNA tools and biotechnology. Uh, recently, the genome, you know what the definition of genome is, the entire DNA um, genetic code of human is called, gen oh, well, any species, I say human, any species, the entire DNA, entire genes, what gene is responsible for what has been uh, discovered. Uh, so the genome sequence of two extinct species also have been discovered. The Neanderthal man and woolly ma uh, mammoth have been completed as well. Those two genomes have been completed. All you need for how can you find the entire genome. You remember in one cell, we talked about this. In one cell, you do have, is that right? In one cell, in case of human, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if you have one cell, just one cell of any species, any species, then you can work out what the entire genome, what are the entire genes of that species are. Okay, so that's, they, they had cells, uh, cells from Neanderthal man and then cells from mammoth, so they were able to find the entire gene. Advances in sequencing uh, techniques make genome sequencing increasingly faster and less expensive. Yes, that is true. In old days when you wanted to do something, it would take a long, long time. But nowadays with the, uh, technology, uh, things go a lot faster. Um, and i give you some examples here in a minute. Hang on. Uh, I will give you some examples that, that you would know uh, what I mean by that, that the, um, the techniques we have now, the things go faster. Do not confuse these two terms, biotechnology and genetic engineering. Do not confuse them. Uh, biotechnology is the manipulation of organisms or their DNA components to make useful products. So what you have, you have a piece of DNA, and then if you're manipulating it, right here, you have a DNA, and then you're able to remove with a technology, for example, the segment of the DNA is causing a disease, for example, you're removing that and putting another sequence in here, and <coughs> that's biotechnology, and that's what they do. They are coming up with bacteria that eats oil. You've heard about that. There, there is an oil spill. They can make up bacteria that eat up, eats up oil. They are making cottons, for example, that are resistant to pests. Just re simply remove the DNA and put another segment in here so the cotton uh, plants are resistant to DNA. The modified, the modified uh, food that we eat Pretty much that's what it is, what they do. Okay, so the application of DNA technology affects everything from agriculture to criminal laws and medical research, and that's what you're gonna do today. Today in the lab, you're gonna do a, a snapshot of what criminal laws are about. You're gonna get a DNA of a person that has been at the scene of a crime, and then DNA of the victims, and so on and so forth, and you compare it, uh, see what happens. Anyhow. And I will go over that. Uh, genetic engineering is the direct manipulation of genes uh, for uh, practical purposes. So genetic engineering is something we have just like Mendel, what Mendel has been doing. Uh, you know, he crossed off the, uh, uh, the purple flower with white flower, and he got purple flower, and he crossed the purple flowers. That's genetic engineering. So we've been doing this for zillions of years, not zillions, but we've been doing it for thousands of years. We human have been doing this for thousands of years. For more, uh, in, in case of farm animals, for more food, uh, they, or more wool animals that they give more wool, you cross them together right here. But this one, is the biotechnology, is when you actually uh, remove a piece of DNA and you put another piece of DNA, that's called biotechnology, or any, anything else like that. Okay, making multiple copies of a gene or other DNA segments. To work directly with specific genes, uh, scientists prepare a well-defined DNA segments in, uh, uh, in multiple identical copies by a process called DNA cloning. And I will talk about that uh, in a minute. How do you clone just DNA 
for example, you take out, uh, you, you have a chromosome, and on the chromosome, a piece of that DNA, that segment of DNA is responsible for insulin, to make, in, to make insulin in your body. So scientists are able to take that segment out right here, so that would be the insulin segment, okay? So they take that insulin segment out, and that's what he's saying. To work, the scientists uh, prepare well-defined DNA segments in, of, uh, uh, in multiple uh, identical copies by a process called DNA cloning. So you take that DNA and you multiply it, and multiply it, and multiply it, and multiply it, and multiply it. So how do you do that? How do you take a piece of DNA from a chromosome and you multiply it? A plasmid, uh, you already know this. If you do not know it, then uh, this is the time to talk about it. A plasmid is a circular DNA. A plasmid is a circular DNA. Right here. Plasmid is a circular DNA. Um, small circular DNA that uh, replicates separately from bacterial chromosomes. So if you have this inside of a bacteria, uh, bacteria have its own chromosomes, for example, like that, then the plasmids uh, multiply by itself. So the definition of plasmid is a circular DNA. That's just a small circular DNA. Uh, researchers can insert DNA into plasmid to produce recombinant DNA, a molecule with DNA from two different uh, sources. So what they do, they take, it is possible, they do it uh, uh, every day, they take that, that, right, that DNA, they took it from human chromosome, insulin, and they take that DNA and put it into plasma. Am I making some sense? So, as a result, this bacteria starts making insulin. That's how it was in old days, back in 1960s and 50s. If somebody needed insulin, Back in 1950s and 60s, if somebody needed insulin, they used to get uh, pig's uh, pancreas and separate insulin from pig's pancreas, and only rich people could afford it, people who had diabetes. They had to sacrifice, well, they were going to slaughterhouses, uh, take pancreas from pigs, and then separate insulin and give it to people who could afford it. But even that, the insulin of pigs, insulin of pigs and insulin of human are not exactly identical. There are a little bit different. Some people were allergic to it, to the insulin of pigs. They're very close, very similar, but some people develop allergic reaction. People who had diabetes. <coughs> okay, so nowadays, with, with these techniques that I just told you, the bacteria makes insulin, it's exactly the same as human insulin. And everybody can afford it, anybody who is diabetic. Okay, so that's what uh, the idea of, um, of uh, manipulating uh, the genes, a recombinant DNA, a molecule with DNA uh, from two uh, different sources. This is one source, and this is another source. So that's what he's talking about. Okay, uh, reproduction of a recombinant plasmid in a bacterial cell results in cloning of the plasmid, including the foreign DNA. That would be the foreign DNA. You all know what I'm talking about. Right here, that's a foreign DNA, human DNA, inserted into the plasmid. And then, of course, the bacteria has ribosomes and everything else, which we you already know, protein synthesis. And insulin is a protein molecule. Start making that. Uh, insulin and then we extract it from the bacteria and then everybody can uh, 
get an injection of that insulin. This is a result of production of multiple copies of a single gene. The production of multiple copies of a single gene uh, is a type of DNA cloning called gene cloning, right here. So what happens that, as I talked about it, they take a piece of a, a DNA from an eukaryotic cell. This is an eukaryotic cell, let's say human cell, any, any of human cell. And they take the uh, DNA out and they take the plasmid out. So when they take the plasmid, they put it into the plasmid of the uh, bacteria. Then they put back, back they put back that plasmid into a bacteria. Of course, this is the chromosome of the bacteria. The bacteria multiply, 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 multiply. When the bacteria multiply, 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 then we can use that gene and put it in plants or back uh, the um, the uh, the oil spills. This is a picture of oil spill, uh, or uh, give it uh, the growth hormone, babies. <coughs> Kids who cannot grow to a normal size, what happens? They give them they give them a shot of growth hormone so they can grow a normal size. You know, some 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 families do that, um, but again, and that's an ethical question. And then of course, uh, protein dissolved blood clots uh, in heart patients. So all of these protein molecules, I gave you an example of insulin that is given to people. So this is all of the end product of this okay so they take for example a resistance here genes I talked about this for pest resistance inserted into the plants they find a plant that is resistant to a pest they take that gene out of the plant cell and they put it in plasmid and right here they have that gene and then they can uh, manipulate put that gene into their plants and the plants or a by different bacteria and the bacteria uh, will eat um, the oil or the uh, plant will uh, be resistant to um, uh, uh, pests. That's one end of the scope. The other end of scope, they make protein molecules. You see the arrows becomes the other one. The bacteria makes protein molecules for the growth or insulin or the blood clot in the heart. Okay, they give it to the patients who need the blood clot or need insulin or need growth hormone. Okay, so there are two uh, ways that this can be used. Here we go again. I guess uh, he's going in uh, detail uh, of the same thing. I did not delete these two slides for you guys to, if you want to look at it bigger and uh, figure out what it is. Using restriction enzymes to make a recombinant DNA. That's what uh, we do not use. Uh, well, we do use the restriction enzymes today. Okay, so we do use uh, uh, restriction enzymes today. Bacterial restriction enzymes cut DNA molecule at specific DNA uh, sequences called restriction sites. So bacteria have an enzyme which is called, which is called restriction enzymes. Right here, they have an enzyme inside of themselves. It's called restriction enzymes and then those restriction enzymes usually are called look like this if you uh, read scientific papers they call it BYC1 something like that you see the acronym uh, for it and then that that would be a uh, restriction enzymes A T uh, uh, Y G uh, J for example uh, 2 something like that okay so those are their restriction enzymes but collectively they're called restriction enzymes and what they do they cut the bacteria it cuts in the bacteria they cut the uh, plasmid or the DNA of the chromosomes and go specific sites that they cut so and I'll show you some pictures here in a minute and we'll talk about it here in a minute so a restriction enzyme usually makes uh, many cuts yielding restriction fragments so if it cuts it right here then you do have a, if it cuts it right here, then you have a fragment here and a fragment there. Okay, so uh, most useful restriction enzymes cut a, a, a staggered way of producing fragments with sticky ends. And I'll show you, Amir, what is sticky end? I'll show you in a minute. Hang on, uh, what does it mean? Sticky end. Um, sticky ends can bond with complementary sticky ends of other fragments 
and then the, of course DNA ligase comes and put them together. So if you have chromosome DNA and then you have another fragment, what happens, they are being put together by DNA ligase, which you already have heard about. What does DNA ligase do? That was the exam question, I believe. Huh? Yeah, it, 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 they, they adhere them together. It adheres all of these segments together. That's what DNA ligase do. It puts DNA together. Yes? But how does it help with um, human disease? Human disease? Like, 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 okay, I will talk about it. Hang on. Okay, right here, uh, this is what, uh, you have a plasmid, of course, right here. And then it will, uh, with the restriction sites, these are G, A, A, T, T, C, C, T, T, A, A, G. And what happens with the enzyme, restriction enzymes will cut off right this area. Okay, the G, it recognizes uh, A, A, T, C, G. It recognizes that and then it will cut it off. Okay, I hope I'm making sense, some sense. And then this end, this would be sticky end right here. And that end is also called sticky end. So if I have another fragment of DNA that is that has A, A, T, T, it will stick here. Not this one, another one. Okay, from human insulin, for example. It will stick right here. So what will happen here is A A as I was talking about that A A T T A A T T. This one will stick right here, and that one will stick right there. That's what they call them sticky ends. These are called sticky ends because if there is something similar to them, you know, uh, complementary to them, you already know that uh, law of base pairing, they will attach to each other. Okay, so at the end, you will have a recombinant DNA, right? I'm not talking about recombinant DNA that uh, Mendel proposed, Mendel came up with. You remember, we had a parental DNA and recombinant DNA, capital Y, capital Y, uh, capital T, small t. You remember that? <clears throat> I'm not talking about that. <clears throat> this is a different type of recombinant DNA. This is a recombinant DNA that can be done in a laboratory, not by growing plants or animals, uh, fruit fly. I'm not talking about that. This is the one that is done in laboratory. You cut the DNA, and then you add another DNA, which is complementary to it, and now you have a new recombinant DNA. Then that becomes a plasmid recombinant this is now you have a recombinant plasmid. That piece of DNA right here, the pink one, is not in the original DNA. It's not in the original plasmid. Do I make sense, everybody? Yes? Okay. Then <clears throat> let's watch this video. I hope uh, I said enough that this video makes a few. Restriction few. enzymes are enzymes isolated from bacteria <clears throat> that recognize specific sequences in DNA and then cut the DNA to produce fragments called restriction fragments. Different restriction enzymes recognize and cut different sequences of DNA. This restriction enzyme recognizes the DNA sequence GAATTC. It cuts the DNA strands between the bases A and G. The resulting single-stranded sticky ends have the base sequence AATT. <coughs> this restriction enzyme recognizes the DNA sequence CTGCAG. It cuts the DNA strands between the bases A and G. The resulting single-stranded sticky ends have the base sequence ACGT. This restriction enzyme recognizes the DNA sequence CCCGGG. No it cuts the end. DNA strands between the bases C and G. The resulting DNA fragments have no single-stranded sticky ends. Does not have sticky end. This one, the last one, does not have any sticky end. The other ones you saw had sticky end, but not this one. Okay, I want to make some sense. So enzymes, I say enzymes, sorry, bacteria have restriction enzymes. 
What is the purpose of restriction enzymes in bacteria? Why do they have it? They constantly mutate. And that's what they do. They have restriction enzymes to cut their own DNA. Okay, so we human tap into their enzymes and we are able with the technology we have nowadays, we, able, we are able to go to bacteria and take that, those restriction enzymes from them and cut the DNA that we want. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. So you're talking about DNA technology, those of you who came in chapter 20. Uh, to check the recombinant plasmid researchers, uh, it comes as a few questions. Now, to check if you had a piece of DNA, you had a piece of DNA and you cut it right here, I'm going to draw it like that, okay? You cut it right here and right here, and how do you know? You look at the vial, you look at the test tube, how do you know it's been cut? You don't know. You don't know that it has been cut. Right? Am I making some sense? So what you do, what scientists do, they run a sample of it on the gel electrophoresis. On this one, something you're gonna do today, you run it on gel right here, you make a gel on this one, and then you put it through electrophoresis right here, and then you know you will see fragments of DNA in a gel then I'll show you some pictures, then you know you did cut your DNA. If you don't see fragments, and I'll show you some pictures, then you didn't cut your DNA. Okay, so that's what this is. To check the recombinant plasmid, researchers might uh, cut the uh, products again using the same restriction enzymes to separate the, uh, visualize the fragments uh, produced by gel electrophoresis would be carried out. <coughs> Uh, this techniques use gel made up of polymers to separate a mixture of nucleic acids or proteins based on the size, charge, and physical properties right here. Okay, so they, they load it up right here. Let's talk about the cartoon first, then I'll talk about the real picture. And that's what you're going to do today. Okay. Uh, a mixture of DNA is loaded up here. You take it from your vials, these are the vials, and you load it up here to the wells. There are wells in here. You take the DNA from vials to wells, and then you attach electricity through it, and you put electricity through it. DNA is negatively charged, so they move toward positive charge. They move toward anodes. And the material here is gel. You already uh, felt gel in here, you remember in the lab, uh, we did with uh, diffusion, osmosis diffusion, there were uh, auger plates, and you came and I said poke it, I don't know you did or not, you should have, if you poked it, it was kind of like a jello, okay, that's what these materials are, different from, well, same kind of products, but different materials from the one you grew uh, bacteria on it. Okay, then we have those bacteria back in the back. So, and then you attach electricity to it. You wait half an hour. In half an hour, if you see these bands, do you see those bands? You see these bands? You see these bands? You see these bands? If you see these bands, you know you cut your DNA. If you don't see any bands, it doesn't show in here. Uh, but if uh, I wish there was one in here. If you see one big clump right here, something like that, then you know you didn't cut your DNA. So this is an evidence of knowing you use the restriction enzymes and you cut your DNA. Then you know you cut your DNA then you take that segment and put it into plasma. I hope I'm making some sense. It would be useless if you didn't cut your DNA. If you didn't cut your DNA, you put, try to put it in here. You know, the plasma will not take it. But if you cut your DNA, now you take that segment and you put it into, uh, into there. So by running this, you know you cut your DNA by uh, doing the gel electrophoresis. This is the gel electrophoresis. Something you're going to do in the lab. Anyhow. Did you say uh, restriction fragments? The fragments are the bands or like the 
these bands, each one of these bands indic is indication of the DNA. Originally, this was all one DNA. Now they got uh, cut to pieces. Okay, so and you are seeing the pieces now. <coughs> That's what these are. <coughs> right, huh? Okay, uh, biotechnology, this is a silly video, but let's walk, we have a few seconds. Uh, I don't know, I, I thought it was silly. It's just looking at these auger plates. Of course, um, we are not doing this in the lab. Uh, these guys, so you're gonna be doing this in the lab today. So you are grabbing these vials these vials and you're going to use the micro pipette I got to run uh, Holland and you already know we already talked about how to use the micro pipette the Eppendorf uh, pipette but um, we're gonna uh, talk about them uh, they're doing different stuff that what we are going we are going to do today uh, none of that is what we are going to do today okay but anyhow let's move on I thought uh, these are automated machines Amplifying DNA, the polymerase chain reaction, uh, the PCR, and it's used in DNA cloning. Polymerase chain reaction, the person who came up with polymerase chain reaction was from Berkeley. Uh, I wish I would have put his name up here. I keep forgetting it. His name was uh, Nolan. Uh, but anyhow, he uh, can produce uh, many copies of specific target segmented DNA. A three-step cycle, heating, cooling, and replicating brings about a, a chain reaction that produces an uh, exceptionally growing population of identical DNA models. Okay, are you, are you with me? Turn and ask you a question. This technique, you remember that? Or should I go back on the... Well, let's go back. Right here, uh, right here, okay. Are you with me so far? I took a piece of DNA, you, you will later on in your life if you're gonna go do research. You take a piece of DNA and you put it in plasmid, right? And then you grow the bacteria, you have many copies of the bacteria, right? Am I making some sense so far? The bacteria grows in the auger plate that you already dealt with it in here. And then many copies of this bacteria grows right here. You have many copies of this DNA, right? Am I making some sense? When the bacteria grows, the plasmid multiply and multiply and multiply, so you have many copies of this. What can go wrong? Why this guy in Berkeley who won the Nobel Prize all by, if you all guys know something about Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize usually are given to scientists and it's being shared between two or three scientists. They work on the same project. One of them was in England, one of them was in the United States, one of them was in Switzerland. Uh, they give the one and a half million dollar, they share it, they give it to three people. Usually that's the case. But this guy in Berkeley, he won the Nobel Prize all by himself. All of that one million, one and a half million, one hundred and one million and two hundred thousand dollars at that time, I don't know how much. But anyhow, that's he won it by himself. It was not shared with anyone else. Where did he get the money? Nobel. Nobel, you know, Nobel Prize. He so he winner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's your money, you can do anything you want with it. But anyhow. He won it all by himself. Tell me, tell me, huh? He got all the money. He got all the money. So tell me, what is wrong with this? What could go wrong that he came, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. He came, he took that piece of DNA, and he put it in a machine, which you're going to deal with it on Monday. The same machine. He made, he made a machine that duplicate this DNA. Instead of going through bacteria, he did it with a machine. Why? Everybody at that time was looking to come up with a machine to multiply that DNA. You know that pink area, you see that pink area here? Everybody was able to cut it by then. 
by 19, uh, it was uh, late 80s, mid 80s, mid late 80s. So everybody was able to cut that DNA, but everybody was looking to come up with a machine to multiply that DNA. Before then, everybody was multiplying it by bacteria. What is wrong with bacteria? You already know the answer. We already talked about it. You should know the answer. Anybody? Steven. When I say Steven, it means everybody. I'm just Steven. It's an easy name to say. Easier than to say Reno. Huh? Very good. Mutation. Bacteria can mutate. So you have a different sequence of DNA. What else? What else? Mutation, transformation, all of that. But what else? You are dealing with a living organism. That organism can any day die. Bacteria die. If they die, Oh, whoops, sorry, I lost my mammoth. You remember? I, might, I lost my Neanderthal then DNA. I lost it. The bacteria died. The bacteria mutated. And this is not the same DNA as Neanderthal man or, or mammoth. You all know what I'm talking about. Those extinct organisms. It's not the same DNA. The, DNA, the bacteria dies. Your SOL. You all know what SOL stands for. Very It's not nice to see that. It's not good. So he came up with a machine that you're going to deal with it on Monday. He came up with a machine right here. They call it polymerase chain reaction, PCR machine. And, and then he was able to multiply the DNA with a living organism. With a machine. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, the key, and I will talk about these three steps. I will talk about heating, cooling, and replication of the DNA. Uh, we will talk about it here in a minute. Okay, uh, the key to PCR is unusual uh, heat stable DNA polymerase called the TAC polymerase. The PCR uses a pair of primer specific for the sequence to be amplified, PCR amplification, occasionally incorporate errors. Sometimes you have errors in the amplified strands, and so it cannot be substituted for gene cloning in the cell. So sometimes it happens, uh, but it's rare you have. There are checkpoints. There are checkpoints that can do that. The machine, the scientist, again, with a, uh, with a gel electrophoresis, they can do that. But anyhow, let's stick to the facts. Right here is a piece of DNA they cut up. Okay, the first stage is to heat it up, denature it. You've heard of that term denaturation before uh, when we talked about protein molecules, when you heat it up or you put acid into it, the protein molecule denature. Well, I'm using the same thing, denaturation, one more time, that you heat up the DNA in the machine. The machine will do it automatically for you. At the beginning, when he was coming up with the machine, he had to go heat up the machine and then he had to cool it off, and then he had to come back, heat it again, and he come back, cool it off. If you read his biography, his uh, life story, you will see that he spent hours and hours and hours in the laboratory, finally he came up with it. But nowadays it's all automated. Uh, automatically the machine will do it for you. Okay, but anyhow, so you, you started out with one DNA, one piece of DNA, you heat it up, you denature it, the DNA separates, and then uh, annealing, but they call it annealing, it means when you add your primers right here, okay, so you are adding the primers right here, when the primer starts in the solution, then you have the, uh, the complementary bases, like you have adenine, guanine in a solution. You have adenine, guanine, cytosine, you have all of those in here, and then extension, is when those new base pans are built next to the old one. You heat it again, cycle number two, you heat it again. In nature, all of, all of these will denature and then you're annealing it and finally extension. And that's what I mean by right here, I gave you those uh, three steps. Where is it? No, where is it? Is it right there? Uh, by heating, cooling,
cooling, you have to cool it, and then of course, replication, the primary in there, they do the job, and it will multiply and multiply and multiply. So after a few hours, you started out with one DNA strand, and after a few hours, you have millions of them. You have millions of strands of DNA. In the first cycle, the first cycle, you have two. Second cycle, you have four. Third cycle, you have 16. Fourth cycle, you have 32, 64. And then each time, it replicates itself. Pretty soon, you have uh, millions of copies. Yes, ma'am? So for the annual, uh, mm -hmm. uh, annually, uh -huh. uh, does it also have like the primaries? And, uh, it has uh, primers. They add the primers. In the annealing stage, you have the primer. That, so the primer that, is created with the primates, like the enzyme? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, those primers are already in the solution. Oh, I you know, do you just, yeah, so you just grab a solution, and you have primer in there, plus uh, you have um, uh, the adenine and guanine and cyanine. They're all separate, okay, with the sugar and phosphate. Yeah, nucleotide, we talked about this yeah. at the beginning of the they're all They're juice. all separate. And then when you add the primer, then when you uh, cooling it off, it will uh, attach to those, the new strands was formed because of the primer. Because of the primer, the new strands is formed by the old one. They come and attach hydrogen bonds. You remember between adenine and thymine, you have two hydrogen bonds. Between guanine and cytosine, you have three hydrogen bonds. And you keep doing this, you keep doing it, Finally, you have many, many copies at the end. In old days, you had to do this before. In old days, you had to do this to get many copies. But now, you do it with machine. PCR machine, they call it. Right here. Yes? So is the PCR also a technique that can amplify a That's what it is. Oh. That's what it is. PCR is the machine that amplifies segments of DNA, segment of DNA. We do not have a machine to amplify chromosomes yet. Maybe I'm looking at them, the future Nobel Prize winners. I'm looking at them. Huh? Who, is, who is the next person, million, million and a half, one and a half million dollars? <coughs> that's your money. That's your money. You can do anything you want. I don't know. They, uh, is it Switzerland? Is it Switzerland? They give you that money? You want to bring it to US? I guess US charges it. If it's the income outside of the United States, I don't know. We can talk to your taxman. Before you do that kind of research, yeah. talk to your taxman. Before we win a Nobel Prize. But anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the technique is uh, he's going over it uh, annealing and denaturation and annealing and so far, extension, cycle number two, and cycle. PCR primers can be designed, they are designed to include restriction sites that allow the uh, products to be cloned into plasmid vectors. Uh, the resulting clones are sequenced and error-free inserts uh, selected. Here they are. So you have DNA fragments uh, combined uh, with plasmid, as I talked about it, and you grow the bacteria, and the bacteria will have, um, will grow. Okay, uh, let's show this uh, a gene cloning. Let's talk, let's show this video, and after that I'll return your exams, and then we start. We can use the techniques of DNA technology to recombine and copy genes. A restriction enzyme is used